What you are about to see is not real news. It is satire based on real news. The characters you are about to see are not real life humans. They are frighteningly realistic puppets based on real life humans. The views expressed in the show are not necessarily those of Starsat, its sponsors, its advertisers, or the nice lady that makes the coffee. What pop? What was that? Okay. Uh, Yogs also headed to Buddha's inauguration. Huh? Hey, you can ride in my bucky. Yeah, they always did call you a bloody saint. I thought that man is pure evil. Don't trust anyone. What? What? Evil? The West. Classifying minions as non Europeans. No! Yes, do it. Now go back out of it. For that one. Leave me! Leave me! Welcome. Welcome. Kamuhelo. Salum Kela. Sonzela. Wamkele Kile. To another state of the puppet nation. This week, Balega Mbete doesn't recognize us. It's actually Madam Speaker, may I? And Musi Maimani needs help. You're the only one who can help us now. All this and more, but first, this. President Barack Obama used the N-word when talking about racist attitudes in America. Republicans across the country were instantly up in arms. This is just further proof of Obama's racism. How come he gets to say the N-word and, and us white folks can, huh? It's outrageous. It's not fair. Damn. 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 Nigger? North Korea has issued a press release joyfully informing the world that Kim Jong-un has discovered a medicine that cures everything. Literally everything. The chief ingredient is ginseng, a major export of North Korea. The other ingredients are secret. Okay, uh, uh, ginseng, uh, Dr. Pepper. Mmm, tastes good, but... Uh, Maybe need uh, something else. Maybe I of aunt. Aunt? Auntie? Come here! No! And FIFA's movie, United Passions, has broken box office records by having the worst opening weekend of any film ever. The movie, which cost over $30 million to make, took in just $918 on its first weekend. And this is in stark contrast to the other movie featuring dinosaurs that should be extinct, Jurassic World, which has cost more than $1 billion already. Obviously, the problem here was casting. I told them they should have gone with George Clooney or Hilary Swank. She won an Oscar the last time she played a dude. Shut up, Daddy! 
the DA are outraged at reports that Zuma and other senior officials plotted the safe exit of El Bashir from South Africa. The Sudanese leader left the country despite a court order being in place to prevent his departure. DA leader Musi Maimani has vowed to get the public protector Tulima Donsela to investigate. Oh, Tuli, I am so glad I found you. You're the only one who can help us now. Help you? I can. Oh, good. I am so glad you can. Uzuma, oh, ho. Uzuma has done a terrible thing. You must stop him. Write a report on Kandla. I did. No, 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 no. Not Nkandla. This time, he has let Al-Bashir leave the country in direct violation of a court order. Then write another report, I shall. Can't you do something more? At footnotes, I shall. Note to self, find a new hero. Secretary General of the ANC, Gwede Mantashe, called for the withdrawal of South Africa from the International Criminal Court. Mr. Mantashe claimed the courts were biased and unfair towards African countries. After what has been called a heated and emotional debate, the ANC recommended that South Africa walk away from the ICC for the time being. No, no, no. We have concerns. Very big, very valid concern. Do these concerns have anything to do with the evacuation of Sudanese President Al Bashir? No, no, no. You see, we have tried to play ball with the West, but they didn't want us on their team. We were always just sitting on the bench. We are now signed with the BRICS. Which means what exactly? I think I've been very clear on this matter. N no, you haven't. No, no, no. I have. We are now on the other team. With the BRICS, not the ICC, or the UN, or their fascist dictatorial manners of dealing with Africa as a continent, we are telling them, no, no, no. No, no, no? Yes. The EFF once again brought Parliament to a standstill last week with their demands that Zuma pay back the money. Balega Mbete called meetings to discuss special measures that could be taken to bring order. Madam Speaker, welcome to Puppet Nation. Deborah, I'm only going to ask this once. You need to preface all statements to me with, Madam Speaker, may I? Uh, <laughs> Madam Speaker, may I? I recognize you even though you are even oranger in real life. Well, if, Madam Speaker, what new measures are you planning to get the EFF to follow the rules of the House? Firstly, we have found a new device that blocks out certain tones, including the notes that Julius's voice must often hit. You know that pay, you know how he says it, hey, you know. Heck. I'm sorry, your signal jamming, my lemma? <clears throat> Madam Speaker, may I? I recognize you. Now be seated. You're going to be signal jamming, my lemma? Exactly. Also, we have installed chair warmers on the EFF seats. That sounds quite... Uh, Madam Speaker, may I? Go ahead, my child. That sounds quite nice. I wouldn't mind a seat warmer right now. They reach the heat of up to 150 degrees. The EFF won't just be wearing red. They will be red hot. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm fairly sure that's not legal. I didn't recognize you. Well, how about now? Welcome to The Logic Factor with me, Justice Malala, where I ask you to think straight, like a wave isn't. <laughs> Last week, I asked you what you thought of South Africa failing to detain Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir. And almost all of you said B. You guys are allowing no grey areas here. No leeway. You guys are so harsh. Yo, 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 yo. This week, I want to know what you think about King Goodwill Zuelatini building a 125 million rand cultural village. Do you think, A, culture is all very well, but 125 million? B. It's another encounter. Scandalous. C. We must honor the mighty warriors that fell at Isandrwana. D. Tourists eat that Zulu shit up. They love it. So, there you have it. A, B, C, or D. 
You can vote on our website or Facebook. Share your logic with us and I'll be back next time to tell you just how logical or illogical your answers were. This is Tim. Tim has a date tonight. This is Jim. Jim also has a date tonight. Tim is using all new Fuck Yeah Breath Mints. Jim is using Yucky Old Cuck Breath Breath Spray. Jim's date will go terribly and he will be alone and miserable all of his life. Tim's date will go amazingly. They'll get married and live happily ever after. Tim's life will be incredible. You have no idea. We know what you're thinking. Why was Tim such a dick that he didn't share his breath mints with his twin brother? Fuck you, Tim. Fuck you. What the hell is this? Oh, I hired a seat warmer. You know, my tush is getting cold. Hi, Deborah. I'm such a fan. <laughs> Couldn't you have gone with a hot water bottle or something that didn't talk? It's job creation, Deborah. I'm helping the economy. <laughs> you know, Justice, he's so much bigger in person. Like, they say the camera adds 10 pounds, but in your case, you must take them away because cause you look so like Svelte on the TV, but... No, okay, thank you. You can go now. I mean, now. Go. Ramaphosa has a rather unexpected new fan club. Following on from words of support from Ruf Mayer, several Afrikaners are now calling for Ramaphosa to be the next president of South Africa. Yeah, Justice. While I take exception to Ruf saying we were all poop scared of Bwita, I do see how Mr. Ramaphosa is a very worthy leader. Almost uh, Afrikaans in spirit. Uh, uh. Afrikaans in spirit? Yeah, you know, he works with the mines, getting the most out of the land. He's not afraid to make money off other people's labor. Not all Afrikaners... Wait, what am I saying? I'm just saying that Rama Poza is a man who has his priorities straight. He can talk to us real oaks. Man to man. Yes, that's what I've always appreciated most about him. How he speaks to me, man to man. Hi, guys. Funny you should be talking about my Cyril because I have a new product inspired by him. And I brought a sample for my lovely friend Evia to try. It's Cyril Seaweed Detox Deep Cleanse Body Wash, getting rid of all your unwanted dirt, even in the hardest to reach places. Yeah, Evie, smell. <laughs> Near South Africa has bombed out of their super rugby season with not a single team making it into their semi-finals. This is the first time this has happened since 2003. But despite the Rugby World Cup later this year, national coach Heineken Meyer is not panicking yet. OK, you know, Deborah, I don't want to say I told you so, but did I f***ing tell you so? Or did I tell you so? Ah. Mr. De Villiers. Remember how good we were at Super Rugby when me, I, Divi, was in charge? F***ing good! Oh, uh, it's not train smash, Debra. More like just a moose of vicious mole! Oh, of course. You. This is not something you'd understand. It's above you. So you're really seeing this as part of a bigger picture? You are calm? I'm totally calm. Uh, wait, I forgot something. Uh, guys, guys, what's that drum for Merlin? Hmm? Hmm? Fuck, guys, what the hell are we gonna do? We need basic training again, flipping foot to ball stuff. We need a new horse, we need a caboose, we need a boxian. We gotta go old school on this! <laughs> oh, uh, just a little pep talk? Totally, totally calm. Yeah, you know, I told you so, Heineke. You should have listened to me, my friend. Fuck you, Dewey. You tell yourself. Tell yourself that. If it was old school or new school, you know, the problem is you need to school the players. Otherwise, you know, it's just going to be like a school of sharks going down uh, in a, in a fucking major storm. And, 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 and then you got to bring the bella in, but they can't fucking swim. 
And now for our weekly celebrity news roundup. What weekly celebrity news roundup? This one. But why? Hello and good evening to all my fans. I'm here to tell you about all the fabulous hot gossip from Celebville with other celebrities like me, the fabulous and unforgettable. But she's still famous enough to call herself a celebrity. Kanye Mbow! Hot off the press is big news about our very own Hollywood star, Charlize Theron. Rumor has it she and Sean Penn broke up. Why do I care about this? They broke up? Why? Why do you care? Uh, you know, I don't. No one does, really. You know, no men want to know that Charlize is single. None, you know. Looks That's... like happy endings are hard to find. The rumors are still flying that Cristelda's wedding was a charity event. Who? And it seems Hollywood might not be all it's cracked up to be. Trevor Noah has been seen and heard around Josie. Are you sure he's not home for a visit? Or a show? Oh, and Charlize and Sean broke up. We heard. And it looks like Minnie's moved on after her breakup with bad boy Kune. But is she really dating Pearl's ex? Who are they? Just smile and nod. How famous are they? Do I really have time to care? And lastly, the biggest story of the week. Sean and Charlize are officially over. You don't say, hey? Hmm? Welcome to Hard Shouts with me, Deborah Patter, the loudest mouth on television, giving you the lowdown on the big mouths out there in the real world. Today, I'm joined by the Speaker of Parliament, Balek Mbete. Miss Mbete, first things first, do you recognize me? Yes, of course, Deborah. I am a big fan of the show. Well, that's a relief. And you don't seem to have blocked my signal either. No, Debra, never. You are a woman after my own heart. You like to tell people exactly what you think. Put them in their place. Yes. It's invigorating, isn't it? It's better than gym. Better than coffee. Better, better than, than sex. sex. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, though, what the hell is going on in Parliament? What kind of nonsense is happening there? I'm simply doing my job, Debra. I can't help it if some unruly children are being unparliamentary. Oh, come off it. You preside over a circus. I would like to see you do better. Challenge accepted. So there you have it. Balekembete. Possibly soon out of a job. So, uh, I really think that this is going to be uh, my year. Yeah. It looks like my daughter has got herself a real go-getter. Hmm? So, Mfanawam, tell me, what exactly do you do for a living? Well, uh, uh, who I am is, uh, yeah. I'm a doom, uh, I'm a cockroach, uh, I'm a cockroach killer. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm a cockroach killer. <laughs> mm. Don't spell doom for your country. Get a career you can be proud of with careering24.com. It's so cold. Where is this global warming nonsense people keep talking about? Actually, the Earth has just entered its sixth mass extinction phase. The first one since the dinosaurs. Mass extinction? Yes. Vertebrates are disappearing at a rate 114 times faster than normal. Hmm, that definitely doesn't sound good. Basically, unless we do something drastic fast, most species on Earth will die soon, particularly humans. Damn. Still cold? No. All of a sudden, I'm feeling pretty warm in here. Great. Maybe it's that global... Job done then. And now for some old news with Rian. Hello, Deborah. Yes, I find the glorious anticipation of summer such a delight too. Is that how I sound? Oh, yes. So, Rian, when are you taking us today? Well, Deborah, the 28th of June is Chris Harney's birthday. I spoke to him on his 50th birthday in 1992. Let me take you back. Good evening, Guyanant. Today, Communist Party leader Chris Harney celebrated his 50th birthday among friends and comrades. Mr. Harney, for so many years, you weren't able to celebrate your birthday freely. It must be great to get a big cake like that now. I will not be free until every single South African is free from oppression. This cake is for all of the people of South Africa. It's a big cake, Mr. Harney, but I'm not entirely sure. It's going to be delicious. 
But first, we need to know how many people want cake. Do you want cake, Rian? Well, yes, thank you. It looks very tasty. Then, we need to determine who has had too much cake already. You don't look too fat, so I will allow. I'll take that as a compliment, thank you. There are no compliments in communism. Just the truth. We also need to ask ourselves, who paid for this cake? Is it safe to eat? You think someone is trying to poison you? Morally safe. Is this cake in line with the struggle of the working class? Does my eating this cake negate the role I strive to play with the SACP? I mean, cake! It's just so merry, Antoinette. Ooh, Hona! Communist cake is so complicated. You know, Chris, I used to think Cook Sisters were complicated, but communist cake, whew! for the news making headlines around the world. Hillary Clinton accused Donald Trump of fostering racism and contributing to the circumstances around the Charleston shooting. Trump laughed. Yeah, and I'll do it again. Ha 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 ha. Obviously, it sucks that some hardworking Christians were killed, but now the libtards have to make it about race. Not everything is about race. A racist attack on black people is about race. Oh, please, black news guy. You and I both know that this isn't about skin color. My skin doesn't go out and make money for me. Not like my hair. No. It's attached to me. Part of me. Touch it. No! Go on. Does it feel privileged? No. No one feels sorry for me like if I had Mexican skin. Mexican skin? Yeah. If you've got Mexican skin, everyone is all, oh, shame. Diddums can't get a jobby wobby. And they don't care what you actually do or what your damn hair looks like. Here you go again. Hm. Making racist and offensive remarks. You're not Mexican. What the hell do you care what I say about them? Damn, black news guy, you're touchy. But racism affects everybody. Stop right there. Hold on to your toupees. I'm going to buy me a Mexican skin. Wear it on weekends and scam people. Genius idea. And once again, Chris Christie said something really stupid and likely to never get him elected president. In more anti-woman rhetoric, Senator Christie reiterated his stance against abortion and vowed to cut spending on family planning clinics. This caused critics to quite rightly accuse him of dragging the state of New Jersey back to the 1950s. The 50s were a wonderful time. Not here they went. Nonsense. The 50s were great everywhere. It was a magical time when women hadn't even heard of abortions. You would rather your whole country went backwards. We need to be back in a time when women were women, when Elvis was king, and we had none of this civil rights nonsense. Barefoot and pregnant, I suppose? Before they burnt their bras, when women hadn't even thought about careers and, and pantsuits. What? Are you insane? They must be. Pantsuits are actually really nice. A time when men had rights, and there was no date rape. We just called it prom night. No one is ever going to vote for you, okay? Ever. Never, ever. When real politicians and real voters wore two-tone shoes and had beards. When women couldn't talk in public and had to walk five steps behind their men. You've just described Iraq and Afghanistan before the Americans freed it. In the 1950s, I wouldn't be dealing with you media asking stupid-ass questions. Good times. Mm-hmm. Addressing a youth rally in Turin last Sunday, Pope Francis strongly condemned all those who work in weapons manufacturing. He said everyone who had anything to do with the weapons industry could not call themselves Christian. Everyone? From the designers to the factory workers. It is a hypocrisy of the worst kind. It is un-Christian. Surely not everyone, though. Everyone. Politicians like that, Obama, sending the people to war. Not a Christian. You know, he was actually trying to stop the war, you know, by... That man with uh, the giant gun killing everyone in the jungle? Not a Christian. Omar al-Bashir? Kony? Rambo! He is not a Christian. Yeah, uh, and also a fictional character. Stevie Spielberg, which is guns in every movie. Not a Christian. Okay, he's Jewish. I mean, all the actors with all the, the guns shooting? Not Christian! You know, you may be taking this a bit too far. Jojos were designed as weapons. You play with a Jojo, you are not Christian. He's definitely taking it too far. Tiddly Winks? And Christian! Rolled up the newspapers? And Christian! Slingshots! 
Hunt Christian. But David and Goliath with the... Questioning the Pope? Hunt Christian! Do you want to make something of it? Do ya? Huh? Hunt Christian! Pokers spill over the ocean. My pokers spill RWC. My pokers spill over the ocean. Boys, bring back the truck we do rope. And bring it home. Mm. Bring back, bring back, oh, bring back that rugby trophy. And so that ends our array of racist egomaniacs and would be world leaders. Thank you for joining us. This was the 86th State of the Puppet Nation. Bye. Bye. That was a good show. It was, oh. wasn't it? Oh, Leon, you frightened me. Oh, great, you're here. You two have plans. Yes, yes, yes. I fired my old seed woman. She was creepy. So Rian is going to keep this baby toasty all night. Good night, man. See you tomorrow. Good night, Justice. Thanks for the honor. Night. You're exploiting him. I know. I'm just making up for her birthday. Sitting in the morning sun, I'll be sitting when the evening comes, watching the news roll in, and then I'll watch it roll away again. I am sitting at the news desk, watching the credits roll away. I'm just sitting at the news desk, wasting time. I am actually wasting time. Sure, look at those letters. Amazing what they can do with computers these days. 